Hi, I'm Bren Antrim, one of the librarians at the Santa Monica College Library. Today we're going to be talking about science research, specifically using the SMC databases and some searching on Google using site limiters. So let's begin. Today we're going to talk about research using uh, the databases, how to find research help, and useful links on the SMC Library homepage. The examples that I'm going to be using for topics are climate change, artificial intelligence, and robotics from the fall of 2023 Science 10 class. And the database tools that I'll be using for these topics are environmental studies, general one file, and computer science. The reason for these specific ones, um, partly it's based on the topic and partly it's to show you different types of databases. These are not saying you have to use these databases. These are saying some of the 120 or so databases that we have. So keep that in mind as we're going through the search. The interfaces will look similar, but the content included in the databases will be different. So in order to get to the library from the college homepage, it's not exactly intuitive. Um, you can either mouse over student support and click directly on library. Or you can click on student support, scroll a long way down the page to more helpful services and resources, and find the library link directly above the Science Learning Resource Center link, amongst the many links. When you come to the library homepage, um, the top half of the homepage looks like this. And you'll notice that there are a number of different search fields. A lot of times people go immediately to the one search field that you see in the center of your screen. This is if you're just beginning your search. You also need some books. You want to check some open resources. But for this class, for Science 10 and for a science research in general, you usually have a pretty good idea of what your topic is. So you can go into specific databases and find um, specific information in a more effective and efficient manner. Um, that takes less time and gets you better results. And there are a number of um, links here in the middle that you'll look at. The databases we're going to be exploring later in a live search. Research guides are a number of um, guides connected to areas of interest and events around the Santa Monica College that you might find of interest or useful to you, including such things as um, assistance doing citation. If you are on campus, you can book a study room for yourself or for a group. Please keep in mind that we have 18 study rooms for about 20,000 students, so you'll want to book early. You can book up to a week in advance on your own device. We have a variety of workshops and videos up on our YouTube channel. Some of them are very short. Um, some of them are an hour long. So uh, when you get the chance, take a look through those and see if there's anything that will be helpful to you. Some of them are on topics like um, how do I do advanced Google researching, which is a workshop I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Um, and then others are specific database applications, like how do I use um, the Science Full Text database, or how do I use the Academic One File database. And finally in the middle is Ask a Librarian. Ask a Librarian is 24-7 chat reference with a college or university librarian. It won't not necessarily be an SMC librarian because we are not on call 24-7. I stopped that when I separated from the Air Force. Um, <laughs> but you will talk to a university or college librarian. Um, and if they can't answer your question, they will send us what's called a ticket. And the next time we are open and on, we will get back to you based on that ticket. The second half of the page gives you links and resources and a little bit of contact and other information. So um, near the bottom second third of the library homepage will be our upcoming events. As you notice here, we have an, an in-person Google researching workshop, we have an online author talk, and we have an online research workshop coming up. And this changes continually, so keep an eye on, um, on that to see what's coming up at the library. In the center, we have um, also, when you click on all library events, that will give you the link um, information for the online workshops. Under our resources listing, we have a listing to that YouTube channel I mentioned and the Ask a Librarian. We have a second link to the private study rooms, and we also link out to tech resources for students. The orientation request form, please note, is only for faculty. And then we have a link to register for the Graphic Novel Book Club. Now, going to the purpose of today's search, um, we're going to be talking about the process of finding um, useful and um, useful articles and effective search strategies. So this is the process that you go by for that. You start at the library website, you go into the databases. Today I'm going to show you how to narrow by subject, 
and then choose a specific database within that subject grouping, and then within that specific database, search for specific articles. The examples um, I'm going to be using for subjects are Earth Science, Current Affairs and Social Issues, and Computer Science. That doesn't mean that you have to stick with these subjects. The subjects that you use are based on your topic. So some related fields, some related subjects could be agriculture, life science, environmental science, physical science, health science, general science covering all areas, or related areas such as business, psychology, or history, etc., based on whatever it is that you're researching. Once you retrieve an article in your database, you can email, save it, or print it. Um, you can get a citation that you will then fix before you put in your paper because the robot does their best, but they are a robot and oftentimes they miss things. You can explore related articles to the article that you found and you can refine, find related topics to your topic. Some research hints, don't do all of your research in one database. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Try more than one database. I recommend a minimum of three. Give yourself time. It's called research for a reason. You can do the exact same search in more than one database and come up with very different results because different uh, databases have different content, cover different journal articles, have different search parameters. Also, I'm going to show you a quick search um, for how to find statistics from the United States government and educational institutions using site limiters, site colon dot gov, for U.S. governmental and site colon.edu for educational institutions. Also, as you get going, you can ask a librarian at any time during the search process. I recommend to ask early and ask often, and we will do our very best to help you on your way to an effective search. So I'm going to do some live search examples now. Um, the first example is for climate change. I'm going to be using the subject Earth Science and using the database Environmental Studies to look at the environmental impact. The second example is going to be under current affairs and social issues, as this is a multidisciplinary topic, which is artificial intelligence. The final example, I'm going to be using the computer sciences subject for robotics for a specific discipline approach. So each of these three topics will show a different approach to the research that you can then use in any database based on your topic. So heading in, to the search here on the college homepage. You can mouse over student support, click on library, and once there, I'm going to skip over most of this stuff. Notice that the Pearl little guy here also says, do you need help? That is not ask a librarian, that is asking an AI for general SMC information. So if you have a research question, go here to ask a librarian instead. So we're heading into databases and there is a lot of information on this page. Um, I'm not going to go through a lot of it um, because I want to show you a specific search track to follow. Um, so you can search by a number of different areas and the search that we're going to choose is all subjects. And I've already looked through this to narrow it down a little, but as you can see, there are a wide variety of topics that you could take a look at. My first topic is going to be climate change. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go into Earth Science. Now, depending on the way that I'm approaching my topic, I could go into environmental science. I go in, could go into health science if I'm looking at how climate change is impacting public health, for example. But I'm going to start with Earth Science to show you one way to search for it. Now this gives the 10 databases that are tagged as Earth Science databases out of our 115 or 16. Don't necessarily go for the best bet because the best bet is not based on your understanding of your topic. Instead, scroll through and see if you can find one that you think would be really effective for your question. And in this case, I'm going to look at Environmental Studies. Gale in Context is just the publisher. And when you look at this, you'll notice that it gives you various topics that you can explore. So if you're interested in activism, for example, that's one. It gives you the impact of climate change on small islands. It gives you the general concept of impacts of climate change. So this is a way to get started if you have a really general idea of your topic. So you can explore this topic it will give you an overview and allow you to read through it.
and it does a decent job on a survey level. Then it will give you links to websites. Notice that many of these are like .gov, .gov, .org, which is nonprofit organizations. You can use this site, um, this overview, and you can cite it. Remember again, fix it before you put it in your paper. You can also save it to your cloud. And it gives you more options to look at. Up here on the top, it allows you to explore other surveys or articles and gives you the article context so you can hop to specific parts of it. From here, you can cite it, send it to yourself, download it, print it, get a permalink, and highlight and take notes on it. If this is something that looks interesting to you, you can view all related articles. And heading back up to the top, you can go back from this document to your topic and it will show you there are this many journals, case studies, infographics, some statistics there, images, reference works, things like um, definitional information, magazines, popular information, news articles, and then it will break it down. So that's one way that you can take a look at it. This is a topic overview specifically on the power grid. And as you see, it breaks it down pretty well and then gives you related topics that you can then explore that way. So that's one way to use this database. The other way that you can use it is you can go specifically in and do a search on your topic. And it will search for your topic using your phrase through all of the various topics that it is included in here. I think I clicked the wrong thing. <laughs> okay. And notice again, it breaks it down. As you notice, there are way too many things here to look at, but it does give you statistics. So this is one place where you can find statistics. And notice also that it is international. Some of it is scientific, some of it is political, social science. Okay. So if I like this, I might want to narrow it down a little bit. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the date. I want maybe the last five years. So I apply that change and it cuts it by two thirds, but it's still too many. So now I want to take a look and I want to say, okay, what subject underneath this huge overarching topic am I interested in? And it will give you many options. So maybe I'm really interested in how it's going to affect the food supply. I can click on that subject and notice how it cuts it way down. Now you can still do a little bit more information here. You can go to document type. And you can say, I don't really want a viewpoint essay. I don't want an interview. I don't want an editorial. I don't want somebody's ideas about this. I want actual articles. So I can click on that, apply that filter, and notice it took out everything except the academic journals, the news article, and the magazine articles. Now again, you still have a lot. So what you might want to do is you might want to take a look at the subjects within this search. And within the search, you might pick weather, you might pick greenhouse gases, you might pick the United States, United States Department of Agriculture. So you have other options within that as well. You can search within your results. So instead of searching the entire um, database over again, you can say, I just want to look in here for is there any information about California? Let's see. And that cuts it down considerably. And now I can look at something that is locally focused within my topic. 
So if I pick one, Notice even though I put California in there, it's also it's still international in scope. So you have to take a look at it and see what you're actually getting. Once I pick a topic that looks interesting to me, just like the overview, it will give me the options to cite it, send it, download it, print it, get a link, highlight, and take notes. It will give me more articles along the same line and it will give me related subjects and when you click on this it will research the entire database so you'll have to start narrowing down again by date and by making it an article and that sort of thing. As well you have some accessibility options here. You can translate it to a different language. You can increase or decrease the font size. You can change the colors. You can listen to it. So if you have issues that require you to do these sorts of changes, you are able to do so. And then here are quick links to do the same thing you could do up here within the article. Okay. So once I get what I want from here, I can go back to my results and I can look at more. I can change things. I can remove or add um, various topics or limiters to it in order to change it. So that is how you use this specific database, and this specific database is intended to be a broad discipline specific search. So I'm going to go and try the second one now, and the second one is um, artificial intelligence, and I'm going to take a different approach to this one. For artificial intelligence, because it is multidisciplinary and there's a great deal of discussion going on about it right now, I'm going to go into current affairs and social issues. Notice there are fewer databases tagged with that than Earth Science. So when I go in here, again I look through and I say, is there something interesting here that I want to take a look at? Um, I think I'm going to go here. This is a general interest periodical search and it is full text, it has reference newspapers and audio, magazines and journals. So this looks like a good place to go if I'm starting something that I want a really broad overview on it. So you notice that the interface looks exactly alike. However, the content is different. So we've already talked a little bit about the subject search and the publication search. So I'm just going to go directly in here and say, give me artificial intelligence. And look at what it gives me, so much stuff. So I go through and I say I don't need 65,000 journals and 150,000 magazines and a million point six news articles. So I'm going to say, okay, give me my date range, last four to five years. Give me my document type. Notice all the different types of documents that it has in this listing poems, obituaries. I don't need all of that. I want articles. The largest category. I apply that. Then I want to take a look at the subjects that it offers. And notice that out of all of these, only 2,000 are actually about artificial intelligence. So that cuts it down considerably, but it's still too many. So now I have the option of searching within it. And when I search within this, maybe I want um, let's stick with the theme. Food supply. I have no idea what I'm going to get here. This is always fun. And wow, it cuts it way down. So maybe there's not much on the food supply. Maybe there's more on food growing because I know artificial intelligence is used in agribusiness. Maybe food logistics, how things get from one place to another. So I might take food supply off and search within for food. So that's how you play with it when you do your searching. Try a term. If it cuts it down too much, see what happens. If it cuts it down not enough, make it more narrow. And then 
I, will, I have all of these limiters and I'm down to here. So I looked at academic journals last time. I'm going to take a look at ma magazines now um, because you can also use po um, popular sources for this. And notice that some of them, it says RMA journal, but it's not considered peer reviewed. So it pops up under magazines. Um, so here's one that looks kind of interesting talking about airports, ATM machines, etc. Now keep in mind this is not academic. This is popular, so this is a magazine. It gives me all of the same options that the other one did. It gives me similar magazines and news reports, not scholarly journals. And it gives me the broader topic of artificial intelligence that we started off with. As we go down, as you see, there are no um, sites or no sources cited. Again, because magazines don't, but, art, uh, but academic journals do. You can get a citation for this. Fix it before you stick it in your paper. And it looks simpler than the academic journal because the information presented in it is presented for a general audience, not a discipline-specific audience. It will use colloquial language, regular everyday language, not academic language. It will assume you don't know anything about the topic, so there'll be a lot more explaining. In the academic journals, they will assume that you are coming in with some foundational information and some information that will help you understand without them having to explain. So there are some differences in the types of results that you get based on whether you get a popular or an academic journal. For the third type, or for the third topic today, sorry. Um, the third topic is robotics, and I'm going to go into computer science for this one. Notice there are even fewer because it is a more specific topic. And again, I look through and I say, hmm, what looks interesting here? Information science, maybe, and then I read the description and realize that's for librarians. That's not for people writing about computer science. So I'm going to go into computer science instead. Again, very similar interface. All of the Gale interfaces look very similar, but the contents are different. Um, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, give me robotics. Start off with a general search. Again, I get lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. So I start with my date. I say change it to the last four to five years. Apply that. Cuts quite a few out, but it's still quite a few because this is a current topic. And then I might say, hmm, I want to look for um, articles. Again, look at all of the different things. They have awards lists and buyer's guides and fictional works. No, I want articles. So I apply that. I'm going to look at my subjects and see what it offers. And as I go through here, ooh, my work in AI has got me interested in natural language processing. So I'm going to see how that applies to robotics. And that cuts me down to magazines, journal articles, and news. So I'm going to go into the journal articles to see what I get. And I say, ooh, this is kind of nice. This is where it's going. This is what it's doing right now. This is what it's doing for data protection. This is what's happening when humans and machines work together on arts and crafts. So there are a lot of various um, ways of approaching it. So I'm going to take a look at this one. Applied Computational Intelligence and Soft Computing from last year. And this will tell me, again, I can do all of those things that I could do with the other Gale databases. I can explore articles that are alike. I can look at related subjects, artificial neural networks, the, the deep thinking that AI uses. And then I can go through it. And at the end, because it is a scholarly journal article, and in this case, a research article, it will give me their references that I can then follow up and see if I can find. It will give me the citation beginning that I then fix before I stick in my paper and gives you 
another link to related articles. So again, this is a really good place to start. Don't stop at one database for your topic. Try two, maybe three, as much as your time allows. Okay. Now the last thing that I'm going to do before I let you go is I'm going to um, show you how to do a Google search with site limiters. So if I am looking for um, robotics, and I'm looking for statistics, and I'm looking for agriculture, because I want to see how robotics are used to feed our cows and to water our plants. But I want something that has some authority behind it. Um, the federal government gathers information, so do state and local governments, in order to determine what's going on in the business sector and also things like grant opportunities. So I'm going to say site colon dot gov all one word all one term no spaces what this does is it limits all of my results to only those domains or only those sites with the dot gov domain and you have to be a part of the u.s government in order to get that domain so national institutes of health um, department of agriculture not really sure what this guy's doing here because but why not um and so I can go through here and I can say, okay, is there something that looks, here's trade, here's the Bureau of Labor Statistics, here's California. Um, so it's state as well as federal. So I'm going to go here to the Occupational Safety and Health um, Administration overview on robotics and the reason why I like um, this is because robots are being used in repetitive and dangerous activities in everywhere from farms to um, warehouses. Uh, so this tells a little bit about this, some standards, some evaluations. So even though I put statistics in the, in the request, I didn't necessarily get statistics, so this is another reason why you have to keep trying. You have to keep researching. Okay, so that's one way that you can use Google. The other way is say that I'm looking for um, climate change statistics, and I'm going to do site colon dot edu. In order to have the domain edu, you have to prove that you're an educational institution, but there is a caveat with this. These educational institutions can be anywhere from kindergarten to post-grad. So you have to take a look at where you get it from, so you're not accidentally looking at a middle school project when you're getting your resources. I've had that happen before for my students. So here we go. Here are some scholarly articles. Be careful when you're looking for articles on Google because oftentimes the publishers will use it as a marketplace um, and they will ask you to pay for it. Go to our databases first to find articles. You should not have to pay for articles until you're a grad student. And then you'll have to decide between food and articles. We all did. Um, so taking a look at this, this is the University of Michigan. They've done a great deal of, of research in this. And As you notice, there's a whole lot of data in here that you could use in your research. So that is a short introduction to the library homepage, how to use the databases for specific topic searches in both general and discipline specific databases, and using site limiters and um, for .gov and .edu in order to specify um, the type of information that you get. I hope that you found this useful. If you have any questions as you're doing research, feel free and please be encouraged to ask a librarian. Good luck with your research.